But speaking of favorites, uh, Bedded Intrusion. It's a rare, cost two, it's an ability. It's double sleepers, and this card is, I think, the most likely card out of basically everything we've seen to fundamentally change the game. I think this card is really, really, really good. Uh, it is kill target character on the battlefield that costs two or less and move it into your graveyard. You may cast that character from your graveyard next turn. And in a vacuum, this card I think is amazing. It's It takes care of a lot of annoying aggro characters, but if we look at the grand scheme of things a little better, uh, sleepers have always really struggled with certain decks. One of them is dealing with triple overseers uh, because sleepers have very, very hard time dealing with flying characters and sleepers, triple sleepers deck tend to be rather slow. And uh, so you can't you can't outrace the overseers. You can't block the overseers. Uh, and sleepers up until this card came out didn't have any way to remove small flying characters early in the game. Very specifically, I'm looking at Tempest. Uh, Tempest, if you're playing triple sleepers right now against triple overseers, Tempest is likely to do like potentially 20 to 30 damage to your fortress before you even have a chance to uh really accomplish much of anything against it and this lets you kill tempest really early in the game and then you can also play her and use her to block other flyers because this card kills tempest and gives you the ability to play her so uh this this is this card's really 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 good and it's not just because the overseers match it's great in against really a lot of other decks like sleepers versus sleepers sleepers versus flamed on um it's it's really 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 good uh we'll move on because i could i could probably compliment this card forever artwork is horrifying but anyways okay all right fickle friendship it's an uncommon six cost double exiles your opponent gains control of target character on the battlefield you control if they do so that means that your character does actually have to make its way to their side you gain control of target enemy character on the battlefield this card's cool and you could potentially play some characters that have negative effects to try to dump them on your opponent and take their best character uh in a worst case scenario you can just give them something small um like a demonic disciple or whatever, uh, give them a one cost character and try to take their five drop or their six drop. That's pretty good. Uh, but you could also do some shenanigans with something like Yobo, who Yobo presents really significant risk to players who have him in play because he can rack ramp up his morale cost really quickly. So this card's really fun. Um, It'll be interesting to see if somebody can come up with some kind of Yobo combo or some other combo with it. But even if you're not comboing with it, it's pretty decent removal because you can get... You give your opponent your worst character, you take their best. Uh, they do both have to be on the battlefield, though. So, uh, yeah, who knows? Could be it could be good. Could be funny. All right, next. Hinecri's Circlet. It's a two-cost unique artifact it is a rare at the end of each turn your opponent loses three life for each player with one or fewer cards in hand i think it's pretty good especially because it's one purity for exiles uh getting your own hand empty is a relatively easy condition to meet if you have chalice out another exiles card uh, getting both players down to zero cards in hand is kind of an, an, an inevitability. And then this card also has Exile too, so it's really easy to play. You can either play it straight up to cost, or you can play it from your graveyard after discarding it. I think this card's quite good. Um, and I think you can kind of cram it into a, a, really a lot of different Exiles decks, because uh, if you're playing 
aggro or some kind of disruptive discard deck. Um, yeah, I think I think it's good. All right. Next, uh, and this is another card that I, I'm going to really hype up a lot. Uh, it's a one cost character that is hybrid flamed on and sleepers. So you could play it in either faction. Immolated Ghoul. It has Flame Strike 2, so when it deals damage to a character, that character continues to take 2 damage at the end of every turn. Uh, characters killed by Immolating Ghoul are removed, which is kind of a nice little bonus there. And that removed effect, I believe, will apply to the Flame Strike that Immolated Ghoul is doing. And then it is a 1-5. Um, for Flamed On, this card doesn't really matter that much, is what I'm just... I'm just going to be completely transparent with that. I don't think this really influences flamed on decks however sleepers really hasn't had that many options for one drops that you can slam on the board and reliably use to defend against fast aggro decks that among sleepers one drops you had really diseased dead is the only one of them that you can put into the defense zone and feel reasonably good about it because the other characters that cost one for sleepers either require ramp up or are just too small um this on the other hand is pretty much guaranteed to kill something that goes into combat with it even if it's not a right, right away because of flame strike so it's a very strong anti-aggro card and then also its stat line of being a 1-5 is very significant. One attack means it really can't do very much damage. It's not an aggressive card. But the 5 health makes it so it can survive uh, a lot of really significant effects. That 4 damage is, is a pretty big number in Infinity Wars because it's on Flame Dawn Commando, Lightning Blast, and Yuanshi's Wrath. And all, th all three of those cards are very powerful and very commonly used and this is a one cost character that doesn't die to those uh so you can feel very very confident that you can put it into the defense zone and stall out the game for the the couple of turns that you might need to get your big sleepers bombs out all right so that's that's another favorite of mine all right and we have lead by example, a five cost ability. It's a common for flamed on plus overseers. And until the end of the turn, when a unique character you control attacks, characters you control get plus two plus one until the end of turn. Um, so I think what is cool about this card is that we're getting to see more of that kind of unique character synergy being tied into the flamed on overseers combination which is cool that that's kind of like a sub strategy now uh and if you have several unique characters out this buff can be pretty big so if you have like three unique characters out and they all attack you're getting a plus six plus three bonus on each of them um but uh question is it, is that something that you want? Is that something that you care about at five cost? This has the ability to push for a really massive amount of damage, but it requires some setup, requires kind of a specific deck type, uh, requires for you to have characters alive. Um, this one does not seem like super significant to me that uh, we'll have to wait and see if there is a unique character swarm aggro deck that can take advantage of it, but my gut instinct says that um, I would, on turn five, really rather play like Cavalry Paladin, like another character to put in the Assault Zone to be attacking, which generates 12 damage and is a little more reliable than um, Lead by Example, which maybe you could push for like 18 damage with it, but that 18 damage is explosive damage that only lasts until end of turn whereas something like cavalry paladin might be able to attack one more time and and rack up a more significant threat over the course of the game that's just a thought okay next a recurring character for us ling bao sage of disorder and this is legendary 
Uh, this is the first legendary we're reviewing. And he's Exiles and Descendants of the Dragons, which is a significant combination because Tibat exists and Tibat has been a mainstay in Infinity Wars as a strong anti-aggro control card. And this kind of caters into that strategy so you can play both of them together. So Ling Bao, he's uh, three cost and he has pay three, exhaust for two turns, discard your hand, draw that many cards, and both players lose that much morale. I think this is good. I think this is very good. Uh, he also has Exile for two, which is a kind of nice little bonus. I would rather play Ling Bao in the command zone, I think, but you have the option to play him in your deck and play him at a, re a pretty significant discount, being able to play him at two versus three um, if you discard him. He's also got 5-7 for a stat line, which is, you know, it's whatever. But uh, my thoughts on this card are I have played some decks that use Exiles and Descendants of the Dragons together where I use Contained Parallel Rift to try to cycle through my deck to get my board wipes and control pieces online. And Contained Parallel Rift is a very strong card, but Ling Bao, this new version of Ling Bao, lets you kind of accomplish something really similar while simultaneously threatening your opponent's morale, which is, is significant for these control style decks. Uh, and you don't have to include contain parallel rift and kind of deal with its unpredictable nature. So I think this card's I think this card's really good. I can really imagine a deck that might use this guy in the command zone. Uh, along with maybe um, Gao Han uh, and Tibat or, or some other kind of control shell where Ling Bao is your driving engine to make sure that you're getting the cards that you need. Uh, and then you have some a lot of defensive pieces to slowly bleed your opponent out of the game. This guy seems like a really great card to me. Okay. Next, Omni Eye. And Omni Eye is a Genesis common, flying 6 7. It's artificial, which does matter quite a bit for Genesis. And when Omni Eye deals damage to the enemy fortress, reduce the cost of the cheapest artifact in your hand by one next turn. So the discount only applies for one turn, which I think is, is significant if I'm, on, if I'm reading that right. Um, Maybe I'm not reading it right. Maybe it maybe it applies the discount next turn, but it lasts forever. Yeah, I'm, I'm retracting my previous statement. I think I think it does discount one per turn. So if you get multiple attacks off, it continues to discount further. And uh, this card, the immediate thing that comes to mind is Omnitron. Uh, this is a potential way to more aggressively try to ramp out Omnitron. It won't discount Omnitron itself, but it'll discount the other cards you need to deploy Omnitron. Um, another thought is that this is only one purity, so you could potentially expand out into other factions. Uh, I saw on Discord somebody mentioned Schoenhauser, and that's a favorite card of mine. Um, but I do really think that the, the most significant card you care about with this is Omnitron. And this Omni I might be a viable card to use in the command zone in that deck because you can deploy it right into the assault zone and start discounting your stuff as early as turn three. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, we'll have to, we'll definitely be testing this one to see how, how good it is. Uh, Cause I think there is a clear deck that it belongs in. It's just a question of, do you want to use this versus something else? Okay. Next. And this, uh, this is another legendary 